Hello, I'm Dr. Tony Talibi, and this lecture pertains to the acute lymphoblastic leukemia and acute lymphoblastic lymphoma of hematology and transfusion medicine board review made simple. Prognosis for childhood ALL has improved substantially with the use of risk-directed induction, consolidation, and maintenance regimens that include CNS prophylaxis. In adults, a five-year overall survival in patients less than 60 years of age is 30 to 40 percent, and those over 60, it's still a dismal 15%. In 2008, the WHO classification divided these heterogeneous lymphoid diseases into two major categories, precursor lymphoid neoplasms and mature lymphoid neoplasms, which is the Burkitts. The precursor neoplasms are further subdivided into B-cell and T-cell neoplasms. The precursor B-cell neoplasms are further subdivided based on molecular cytogenetic abnormalities. Oftentimes, fibrosis or tightly packed marrow may lead to difficulties with marrow aspiration that necessitates a biopsy to make the diagnosis. So if you see a quote-unquote dry tap on the boards, think either ALL, AML M7, or hairy cell leukemia. Since it's difficult to make the diagnosis morphologically, immunophenotyping is of paramount importance. B-cell ALL cases are terminal deoxynucleotidal transferase positive, TDT positive, human leukocyte antigen, HLA-DR positive, CD19 positive, CD79A positive, CD10 positive, and CD22 positive in most cases. Lymphoblast and precursor T-cell ALL are TDT positive and often express CD7, cytoplasmic CD3, as well as CD4 and CD8. The mature B-cell ALL Burkitt has a unique immunophenotype with expression of surface immunoglobulin and strong expression of CD20. It's possible for ALL cells to also express myeloid amino markers as well. CD15, 33, 65, as seen in MML gene mutation ALL. CD13, 33, expression as seen in patients with TEL and L1 fusion, translocation 119. Remember, ALL expressing myeloid amino markers do not necessarily respond to myeloid-directed therapy with 7 plus 3 induction, but may be a useful tool to follow patients for minimal residual disease with RT-PCR. Age is very important for prognostication in ALL. Age is divided into 1, less than 1 years old, which is poor risk, between 1 and 9 years old, which is the best risk, and more than 9, which is poor risk. Cytogenetics are also extremely important for prognostication. 70% of infants less than 9 months of age have 11Q translocation along with translocation for 11. These patients more often have hepatosplenomegaly, elevated WBC count, and increased risk of CNS disease and have much worse prognosis. This table you absolutely must need to know for the hematology boards, not necessarily the internal medicine or the USMLEs. Hypodiploidy and ALL for prognosis. Translocation 119, AML1, TL fusion for prognosis. Translocation 411, MML fusion for prognosis. Translocation 922, BCR able Philadelphia chromosome, the worst prognosis. Jack 2 mutation seen in Downs. Poor prognosis. Complex carrier type, more than five chromosomes, poor prognosis. Translocation 1221, good. Hyperdiploidy, good. There's no such thing as a good prognostic ALL. There's a poor risk and there's a quote unquote better risk. In adults, T cell ALL actually fare better than B cell ALL, which is the opposite of lymphomas. In children, B-cell ALL fare better than T-cell ALL. WBC less than 30,000 in B-cells and WBC counts less than 100,000 in T-cell ALL have better prognosis. Also, less than four weeks time to achieve complete remission with induction chemotherapy is a good prognostic indicator. In adults, age in less than 35 is a better indicator than age more than 35. And less than 0.01% minimal residual disease following completion of induction and consolidation is a very good prognostic indicator. We'll discuss that some further. Treatment of ALL, case report. Eight-year-old boy, 
admitted with fever, fatigue, and leg pain. CDC revealing hemoglobin 4, platelet 16,000, WBC counts of 9, 80% blasts, 17% lymphocytes, 1% basophils, 1% monocytes. Physical exam revealing hepatosplenomegaly and multiple lymph nodes in the neck, axilla, and abdomen. Bone marrow and peripheral blood flow in agreement with pre-BALL. Conventional cytogenetics does not reveal chromosome abnormalities, but fish analysis demonstrates translocation 411, the MML gene. How to treat this patient. First, you must prepare for tumor lysis syndrome with allopurinol as well as IV fluids and treat hyperuricemia with resveratrol if it does occur. Prophylaxis for pneumocystis coronae pneumonia with Bactrim as well as antifungal and antibar prophylaxis during treatment. Transfuse only irradiated or packed RBC to prevent graft versus host. Now, the actual treatment induction with glucocorticoids, corticoids, fincristine, aspir asparaginase with CNS prophylaxis, either methotrexate by itself or triple therapy with methotrexate, terabine, and hydrocortisone. In consolidation, more commonly used regimens include high dose methotrexate with or without mercaptopurine, high dose asparaginase given for an extended period of time, or a combination of dexamethasone, fincristine, asparaginase, and doxorubicin, followed by thioguanine, cetarabine, and cyclophosphamide. The maintenance phase is methotrexate administered weekly and mercaptopurine administered daily for two years. In children, maintenance treatment is actually adjusted to keep the WBC count less than 3,000 and ANC between 500 and 1,500. Generally hold off on allogeneic stem cell transplant after first complete remission in children since prognosis is very good with standard treatment. Now, the allogeneic stem cell transplantation indication in children with ALL. One, early poor response to remission induction treatment. For instance, 1% blasts remaining after remission induction is the most frequent indication for transplantation. Relapse disease, which is chemotherapy sensitive, at least a partial response to clofarabine, atopocyte, and cyclophosphamide. Remember, even the slightest bone marrow relapse has very poor prognosis. If CNS relapse, consider allotransplant as well as cranial radiation. And if testicular relapse, consider allotransplant as well as testicular radiation. Treatment of adolescents with ALL, remember, treat them with pediatric protocols as opposed to adults since there's improved survival. Now, treatment of precursor B or T cell ALL in adults. First, induction. Glucocorticoids, increased seen in asparaginase, and addition of anthracycline, along with CNS prophylaxis. Also, adults have a much higher translocation 922 Philadelphia chromosome, so begin imatinib concurrently. They also use hyper ZVAD regimen, hyperfractionated cyclophosphamide, dexamethasone, and cresting and doxorubicin without asparaginase during induction, and high dose of terabine and methotrexate during consolidation with growth factor support. The consolidation more commonly used regimens may also include high dose methotrexate with or without mercaptopurine and high dose asparaginase given for an extended period of time, or a combination of dexamethasone, fincristine, asparaginase, doxorubicin, followed by thioguanine, cetarabine, and cyclophosphamide. <clears throat> the maintenance, again, met methotrexate administered weekly, and mercaptopurine administered daily for two years, supplemented by monthly pulses of incristine, corticosteroids, and periodic intrathecal methotrexate. Add imatinib if patient is Philadelphia positive. Very important. It appears that the major difference in treatment between adult and pediatric regimen are the more intensive use of non myelosuppressive agents, such as glucocorticoids, asparaginase, and cristine in children. Unfortunately, the adults cannot tolerate the same doses of treatment as children. Stem cell transplant indication post remission induction in adults. If patient has Philadelphia 922 translocation, they should proceed directly to an allogeneic transplant post-induction after first CR due to dismal prognosis. A patient also has standard risk, meaning, for instance, hyperdiploidy, and has a matched sibling, very important, matched related sibling. Then the matched sibling allo stem cell transplant following complete induction remission is recommended due to improved survival based on the ECOG 2993, which is a landmark study. Otherwise, other studies, including the Medical Research Council United Kingdom 12 and ECOG 2993, have shown that adults with high-risk ALL 
meaning H more than 35, WBC more than 30,000 B cells, and 100,000 in T cells, actually do not benefit from fully ablative allogeneic transplantation after CR1 due to high transplant-related mortality. Other indications for adult ALL to proceed to allotransplant? Poor early response to remission induction treatment. For instance, 1% blast remaining after remission induction is the most frequent indication for transplantation, either positive by FISH or PCR. Relapse disease, which is chemotherapy sensitive, at least partial response. So either high dose of terabine, nilarabine, and remember clofarabine and relapse treated children T cell ALO. Remember, even the slightest bone marrow relapse has very poor prognosis. If CNS relapse, consider allotransplantation as well as cranial irradiation. If testicular relapse, consider allotransplantation as well as testicular irradiation. Detection of minimal residual disease on follow-up after remission. Patients with 1% or more leukemic cells after remission induction fare almost as poorly as those who achieve clinical remission by conventional morphologic criteria, at least 5% leukemic blast. Whereas those who achieve molecular or immunologic remission, less than 0.01%, have an excellent outcome. So remember this number, 0.1%. So if after treatment the patient has increasing detection of leukemic cells based on PCR assay of fusion transcripts, is a very poor prognostic indicator and need to prepare for an allotransplant. Mature B cell leukemia and lymphoma, the Burkitt's. The three possible translocations may cause Burkitt's and absolutely must know all three. Translocation 28, 418, I'm sorry, 818, I apologize, 814 and 822. So again, 28, 814 and 822. This is a CMIC. Since the rate of tumor lysis is tremendous, may consider one week of remission reduction phase, in which steroids or one dose of vancristine are administered, which will lower the disease burden and lessen the severity of impending tumor lysis with induction treatment. Prognosis has improved drastically with induction use of fractionated high doses of acolyting agents, such as cyclophosphamide or iphosphamide with high dose methotrexate. These agents are combined with vancristine and anthracycline and consolidated with single with high dose of cetirabine and administered in rapid succession over four to six months. Do administer CNS prophylaxis. Since mature ALL cells are CD20 positive, also incorporate rituximab. Do not need two years of maintenance therapy. Now, what is the difference between acute lymphoblastic leukemia versus acute lymphoblastic lymphoma? The difference is arbitrary. Patients with more than 25% bone marrow replacement by lymphoblasts are considered to have acute lymphoblastic leukemia, whereas patients with a lesser degree of replacement or no detectable abnormal lymphoblasts in the marrow are classified as having acute lymphoblastic lymphoma. Treatment of the two is similar. This concludes the acute lymphoblastic leukemia slash lymphoma chapter. Thank you.